Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are of course going to talk about Tesla's Battery Day presentation, an event that we will be unpacking over the coming days, weeks, and even years. Tesla just gave us so much information to digest, and that's going to take a lot of time. As we can tell from the stock price's reaction today, the stock I think down 7% after hours, and that follows a drop from earlier in the day during trading of about 6%, but make your own opinion separate from the stock price. That should not be the proxy for how important or how good this information was from Tesla, because the short-term reaction is no indicator of how the stock is going to perform going forward from this. The Cybertruck event is a great example. It dropped sharply after that event, but I think we're all well aware of what has happened the following six to nine months. So set the stock price aside and let's talk about what Tesla actually announced today, because they announced in great detail their exact plan to become the most valuable company in the world. That plan is all about battery production. So Tesla, of course, introduced their own battery cell, their own battery cell production line, allowing for better performance, cheaper cost per kilowatt hour, and more production over time, scaling to three terawatt hours of battery production in-house from Tesla by 2030. That's about 80 times Tesla's current scale. That's 3 billion kilowatt hours per year, or enough for 40 million long range 75 kilowatt hour vehicle packs per year. That doesn't mean that Tesla's going to produce 40 million vehicles per year. They are targeting somewhere around 20 million. And then a lot of that battery production capacity is going to go to energy storage products. But think about it this way. Right now, Tesla is utilizing about 35 to 40 gigawatt hours per year of battery production. And at those levels, Tesla is able to generate roughly $30 billion per year in revenue. So let's just do some really simple math here. Right now, Tesla is generating about $750 million in revenue for each gigawatt hour of battery capacity they're utilizing. Over time, their goal is to drive costs down and pass those cost savings in part onto their customers. We learned today that Tesla has figured out how they can reduce their cost per kilowatt hour of battery produced by about 56%. So even if we assume Tesla passes on almost all of those savings to their customers, and let's say instead of earning $750 million per gigawatt hour, they only earn half that, so $375 million per gigawatt hour of battery capacity. Well, if we apply that to three terawatt hours or 3000 gigawatt hours, that's $1.1 trillion in revenue. So that's just a quick tops down approach, but we can get similar numbers starting from the bottom and going up. So let's say 20 million vehicles, $32,000 average selling price, 100 kilowatt hours per vehicle. So two of the three terawatts dedicated to automotive, that's $640 billion in automotive revenue. Then you've got a terawatt hour of battery production capacity left for energy storage. Right now, after a price drop in the power pack product today, Tesla is selling energy storage for a little over $500 per kilowatt hour. So if we cut that in half to $270 per kilowatt hour, then for a terawatt hour or a billion kilowatt hours, you're looking at a $270 billion business there. So then adding that to the $640 billion from automotive, you're at $910 billion. Throw in another 8 to 10% for services and other which is right around the percentage of that business line today. That gets you to a trillion in revenue annually before even considering the solar business. Right now, Walmart is the company generating the most revenue each year, and they're at about $523 billion per year. Tesla today laid out an extremely clear path to doubling that. And you know what we haven't talked about in all of this because this was battery day? Autonomy. If Tesla is producing 20 million vehicles per year at some point, that means there are going to be literally hundreds of millions of Teslas out there, which absolutely worst case can earn really high margin software type revenue on very advanced driving assist features on things like entertainment, things like premium connectivity. And that's worst case if Tesla doesn't actually figure out full autonomy somehow in the next decade. So again, after hours trading, the day of the event isn't necessarily going to recognize these things, acknowledge these things, but this is something that an institution can go back, they can dig into, they can do research on, They can assess the impacts to the financial model because Tesla has shared a little bit more information on that today. Things like the 56% reduction in cost per kilowatt hour, which should drive Tesla well below the $100 per kilowatt hour level, which is often considered to be the threshold for parity between an electric powertrain and an internal combustion engine powertrain. The 69% cost reduction that Tesla believes they can achieve in terms of investment per gigawatt hour produced, and the 54% range increase that Tesla believes they can achieve with these advancements. By the way, that range increase would enable a 500 mile range Model 3 with roughly a 115 kilowatt hour battery pack, which would actually cost Tesla less to produce 
Once we apply that 56% cost reduction in terms of cost per kilowatt hour, then the standard range plus pack does today. So Tesla could sell that 500 range Model 3 for under $40,000. Now, would Tesla actually do that? Who knows, that depends on how they decide to structure their product line. But they told us here very clearly with these numbers that they could do that if they wanted. And they could do it in just a couple of years. Now, not all investors wanna sit around and wait for that to occur in a couple of years. And that short-term nature, that what are you doing for me today mentality I think any disappointment around battery day would stem from that. You know, we didn't see a Plaid Model S available today. We see it available for late 2021. We didn't hear about the pilot line being at 10 gigawatt hours today. We heard about it being there maybe within a year. We heard about Tesla's goal of 100 gigawatt hours per year in 2022 produced in-house. But there was no wow moment. There was no, today Tesla has this 500 mile Model 3 for $45,000, nothing like that. And so traders and those more short-term horizon investors are just gonna sell out when those things don't happen. But back to the point on institutional investors, they can go back, they can look at these things, they can process it, and then they can decide to take a position. And if an institution does that, that can have a significant and lasting impact on the share price over time. Personally, as a long-term shareholder, I really couldn't be more excited. I think Tesla met and exceeded in a lot of areas all my expectations for this event. A lot of the rumors that we had talked about in the preview episode ended up coming to fruition. We got our larger battery cell, 4680, so close to my guess of 4575. So it definitely seems like that electric leak was indeed the Roadrunner cell. And those cells will have five and a half times the volume of the 2170 cells used in the Model 3 and the Model Y. To counteract the disadvantages of that larger cell, Tesla came up with the tablet cell design, allowing them to shorten the electrical path length to one fifth what it would be under a normal tabless construction and also making it cheaper and faster for Tesla to manufacture. They also discussed a number of changes within the cell, so we heard more silicon in the anode. I need to go back and watch and see exactly how much more, but it sounds like they've found a pretty unique way of doing that for an extremely low cost. They've continued to make improvements in the cathode using more nickel, less cobalt, in some cases iron as well, lithium iron phosphate, helping them diversify the supply chain, keeping costs lower and allowing for more rapid growth. And then of course, they finally talked about dry battery electro technology, allowing them to both increase the performance of the battery cell and significantly reduce the footprint and increase the throughput of battery manufacturing. And then finally, they talked about something that I think is a prime example of the benefits that Tesla has of their organizational structure, their vertical integration, and their first principles approach to design. And that is battery cell to vehicle integration. Think about that. A company that's just purchasing cells and putting them in their vehicle is never going to come up with that design. A battery company that's just building the cells and selling those is never going to come up with that design. It really takes a company that's doing both and approaching both of the design steps at the exact same time to be able to reap the rewards granted from cell to vehicle integration. This cuts out unnecessary modules that add weight and add space and cost time and money to manufacture. Furthermore, because the battery cells are then used as a structural component of the vehicle design, you're then able to eliminate what those structural components were before, further saving weight, further saving volume, further saving time, and further saving money. When explained like that, I think you can start to see how all of these little, seemingly little things can be combined into very powerful, tangible improvements to both the vehicle and the value of the vehicle to the customer. Elon has said it best a couple of times now. First, he said the pace of innovation is what matters. And then today, if you listen very closely, he said that that pace has actually been accelerated. Tesla right now is innovating more rapidly than they ever have before in their past. These are the details that make me extremely confident that Tesla will have the best value proposition in automotive and stationary storage. Now it's just a matter of how fast. How fast can Tesla do these things that they have set out to do? So far, Tesla has said 100 gigawatt hours in 2022, three terawatt hours by 2030, but even just that first milestone, 100 gigawatt hours, again, that's about two and a half times where Tesla is today. That's 1.3 million 75 kilowatt hour battery packs, and that's just from Tesla's internal production. They will continue to scale with their external partners as well, meaning Tesla could easily be targeting some number above 2 million vehicles for 2022. That's about the size of BMW. I think Tesla, with the advancements that they announced today, should have no problem selling at those volumes. So I think there's a ton to be excited about here. There are a couple things that we still need more details on. Tesla, to my knowledge, didn't really talk much about cycle life. I don't think they said anything about a million mile battery. This is just a matter of the trade-offs Tesla wants to make though. 
Again, they already have that capability, that technology already exists and is being utilized in Tesla's energy storage products. So if and when Tesla feels like the value of that is such that it should be included, they can do that. But hopefully we'll get to hear more about that at some point in the future. And then the question that I was going to ask, I was next in line before they switched over to the say questions, was about charging rates. They didn't really talk about this. I think they should be able to either improve the charging rates. Again, they said 250 kilowatts plus at the Cybertruck unveil. So my guess is that max rate does eventually come up. And I also believe that the curve, the charging curve should improve. So I think they'll be able to take those higher rates of charge for longer periods of time, which might even be a little bit more important than that max rate. That should especially be the case as we start to see vehicles with these higher capacity packs. A couple of final thoughts here. I think a lot of people are very excited about the potential for a more compact Tesla, maybe a Model 2 for $25,000. Tesla said that was the aspiration for a few years from now. If autonomy does happen, that vehicle will obviously be a perfect fit for that. And then as for more short-term stuff, Elon did mention in the shareholder meeting portion of the event today that they should be growing 30 to 40% this year. I believe at that point he was talking about vehicle deliveries. Tesla delivered a little over 367,000 last year. 30 to 40% growth on that number would be somewhere between about 475,000 to 515,000 vehicles in 2020. Now that battery day is over, that attention will probably shift back to Q3 for Tesla. We wind that up in just over a week here now, and we're probably about 10 days away from getting the production and delivery numbers for the quarter. So I'll be doing some more analysis on that in the coming days. Stay tuned for that, but that'll close it out for today. As always, thank you for listening. It was awesome to meet some of you at the event today. I wish it could have been under more normal circumstances, but maybe next year. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. I am traveling tomorrow, so I will see you again on Thursday, September 24th. Until then, thank you.